Hey everybody, I want to give you a quick little preview slash study guide for the test which we're going to put online a little bit later today. Uh, I'm completely fine if you use this to kind of help you or guide you throughout the test. I know it's going to be a little bit challenging doing it at home and having been there for the last couple weeks, so feel free to use this to help you. The questions on here are very similar to the questions that you'll see on the test, but they are not the same. But I tried to design them the same way so that you can uh, use this and as a way to kind of be prepared. And if you just kind of want to even pause the video and um, have this up as a resource while you take the test, that is going to be okay with me too. So there are 15 questions. We're going to go over uh, basically all the types of questions that you'll see. The first questions will be from the beginning of the chapter. They should be a little bit easier. Uh, for example, number one is going to look something like this. Why? Or number one says 13 equals x plus 6, and you're going to have to have two, two answers. You're going to have to tell me what the real answer is, so obviously uh, you're going to find the variable. You want to isolate the variable, so you're going to do the inverse of adding 6, which is subtracting 6, and whatever you do on one side, you'll do the same thing on the other, and you'll get your answer of this one, x equals 7. So they'll have one little box on the computer that'll say x equals, and it'll obviously have a little... Uh, space there for you to put the answer, and that's where you'll put your answer of 7. And then there will be a, a question underneath it. It'll say, which step did you use to solve the equation, right? And so it's going to have like four choices down here. Which step did you use to follow the equation? It's going to be easy. Just look and see what did you do on both sides of the equal sign. When you did inverse operations, what did you do? On my example, I did subtracting 6 on both sides. So I bet there would be one that said like add 6. There's probably going to be one that says subtract 6. That's the one you're obviously going to want to pick. That's going to be it. There'll probably be one that says multiply 6. And there might even be one that says divide 6. And so they're going to give you all the four options, and you're going to have to choose the correct one. What did you do on both sides of the equal sign to isolate the variable? That's going to be number one. So number one should be a very easy question if you're... Um, not confident on number one, make sure you use that right there and you can rewind it and go back and look if you want. Number two is going to be very similar to number one. Number two is going to look something like this. Um, this is going to be a little bit more difficult looking, but it's not really that much more challenging if you understand what's going on with the W and the negative three. So if I ask you what's happening with the W and the negative three, most people would be able to say, okay, it's a fraction and a fraction is a way of showing division. So how do I undo division by negative three? I do multiplying by negative 3. And so uh, the correct way to solve this is to undo the dividing with multiplying. Whatever you do on one side, you do the same thing on the other side. Over here, multiplying and dividing knock each other out. And over here, you get your answer, w equals 7 times negative 3, negative 21. And so in the little box over here, you would type negative 21. And then it's also going to say down below, it's going to ask you which step did you use to... You know, down below there's going to be another question. Don't forget about that. Some of y'all get so happy that you get this answer that you forget that there's a piece down here. It's going to ask you, which step did you use or could you use to solve this equation? It'll probably say, you know, add negative 3. It'll probably say subtract negative 3. It'll probably say multiply negative 3. And then it'll likely say divide negative 3. And just all you need to do is double check. Well, what did I do when I did inverse operations up here? Instead of dividing by negative 3, we decided to multiply by negative 3, so you would choose this option, multiply by negative 3 on both sides, right? So make sure you put both answers on number 1 and number 2. You should have two, two answers. One is the actual solution to the variable. The other one is describing what step you took to get that answer. Okay, number 3 is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, it's not the hardest question ever, but for some people this kind of throws them for a loop. This is just a two-step equation, but the way that it's written, they made the whole thing a fraction. And so, like, this sometimes makes people kind of doubt themselves on what they should do. If you remember, I told you guys, usually I like to do the adding and subtracting part first, right? Whenever there's the variable here is being subtracted and it's being divided. So I usually say do the adding part or subtracting part first. So normally we say add 6 and add 6. But you can't really do that on, how are you going to add 6 when you've got this silly fraction down in the way? It doesn't really work. And so on this question, and this is the only time I do this, when the whole thing is a fraction over here, I'm actually going to undo the dividing first. I'm going to multiply by 5, and I'm going to multiply by 5 just to get rid of that silly fraction. So this is one of the rare instances where I do not do the adding and subtracting first. I'm going to do that last. 5 over 5 equals 1, so over here it cancels out, and you just have x minus 6. And over here, negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. 
And now step two for this equation is going to be do the adding and subtracting. So the x is being subtracted, so I'm going to undo subtraction with addition. And this blue doesn't like to show up sometimes. Let me press a little harder. And over here, negative 6, positive 6 cancel out. You get your final answer. x equals... And then negative 20 plus 6 is negative 14. That's a 14. Doesn't look very good. So on this question, on number 3, don't get fooled when the whole thing is a fraction. Just undo the dividing first with multiplying, and then you'll be good to go. Okay, so number 3 on, the, on your assessment is going to look very, very similar to that. Hopefully that one's not going to trip you up too much. Number 4 is going to be more of your typical uh, two-step or multi-step equation. Number four might look something like this. Now this one can, this one also has a little, a tricky aspect to it. So let me just kind of work this one out. This is not the same question, but it's similar. Uh, the question that you'll get on number four is very similar to this. <sighs> what part do I want to do first on this, right? Um, most of you know, okay, well there's the parentheses, you probably have to distribute. But what am I actually distributing? There's no number here, right? It's just a negative sign. Remember, that is an imaginary one. So if you need to write that in there, and I, I mean, I don't mind if, if I was in your shoes, I would like write these questions down on paper and work them out. I wouldn't try to do all these in your head. Just looking at a computer screen, trying to solve these questions is not going to be the most effective strategy. Just write them down. If you have a whiteboard at your house, like I do, use that. If you just have paper and pencil, just do that. So don't try to do these in your head. Okay, back to the question. We definitely want to distribute, and this is a negative one. So negative 1 times 5w, negative 1 times 3. There I distributed. That's the only thing I want to do right now. Let me just copy the rest of this down, the 10, the equal sign, the 52. Okay, now on the left-hand side, I have too many terms. I can combine some of these terms together, right? This is a normal number, and this is a normal number. They're called constants. I can combine those together. So what I really have is negative 5w. See how it has the minus in front of it? That's why it's negative down here. And then 10 minus 3 is 7. Now, if that really hurt your brain and you're thinking, well, wait a second, couldn't I just say 7 minus 5w? Yeah, you could have said that if you want to put the 7 at the beginning. That, that's going to be okay. You, you'll still get the right answer. And then once you get to this part, it should be easy, right? I don't, I don't even need to work it out probably from here, but I will just really quickly undo the adding with subtracting. Now, this is where we'll have a chance to actually do the adding and subtracting part first. And you'll get this, um, 45 equals, that's 0, negative 5 times something, and then you can divide it. 45 divided by negative 5 equals negative 9. So that one's going to have almost like four steps, right? Step 1 is distribute. Step 2 is combine like terms. Step 3, add or subtract on both sides. Step 4, multiply or divide on both sides. That is a great multi-step equation. That's going to be number 4. Use this question. You can rewind it and pause the video and go back. I don't care. Whatever it takes for you to uh, feel comfortable with number 4. Okay, number five is going to have a little bit of an awkward situation um, because you're going to have distributing on both sides. It's going to look something like this. This is not the real question, but this is something similar to it. I apologize. This marker keeps squeaking. I know that doesn't always translate well to all of your ears. So this is going to be a little bit similar to the last one, just in a way that we both have distributing here. So if I want to do this one like the last one, I'm going to distribute 3 times negative 4, 3 times 8w, whoops, 24w. And then over here, same idea, 5 times 2w, and then 5 times negative 8. I don't even know if this question works, guys. I just made all these up. If I get a decimal, I'm going to apologize. So this is going to give you a chance to practice the skill of, or show me your ability to do a, a question that has variables on both sides, right? We have variables on both sides. We have constants on both sides. As long as you cancel out something, you're going to be okay. But I've told you in my class, I don't like to have variables on the right-hand side. So if there's a variable on the right-hand side, like this 10w, I'm going to go ahead and undo that first. I'm going to undo the 10w with minus. Notice, I did not put plus. Some people see this and think they want to do plus. No, 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 no. If I did 10 plus 10, that doesn't equal zero. I want this to cancel out. And so I have to do subtracting because 10 minus 10 is 0. 10 plus 10 would be 20 w's, and that wouldn't work at all. 10 minus 10 w minus 10 w is 0, and then 0 minus 40 is negative 40. And so now I have this, negative 12, I haven't messed with. 24 w minus 10 w, that is, oh, geez, 14. And from here, it should be easy. If you can't get it from here, 
uh, you're having a bad day, right? Undo the this with this because they're the two constants. And then we're going to save the w part, the multiplying part for the end. 14 times w equals, that's negative 28. Oh, it is going to work. Negative 28 divided by 14 is off my board there. There you can see it. And that's obviously negative 2. So these obviously are not the real answers to your questions, but it's going to be a question similar to this, right? Distribute on part 1. Step 2, I like to undo the variable from the right-hand side. You don't have to do that. You could have done plus 40. You could have done minus 24w. You could have done plus 12 on both sides, but that's just my opinion. I like to undo this right here, the variable on the right-hand side. Step three, add or subtract. Step four, multiply or divide. Boom. Number five is in the books, and we are a third of the way done because there are 15 questions. So, and I'm not going to do all 15 questions. Some of these are very similar. So this isn't going to be like a 30-minute video or anything. For example, six and seven are almost the exact same question. So six and seven are both going to be uh, questions where it asks you how many solutions does this equation have and I've just made up one example here so this is going to work for both six and seven it's not um, obviously they're going to have different answers probably but this will be one example that you can use to help you on both number six and number seven it's going to say this equation has and then it's going to give you a big box here it's going to say hey this equation has how many solutions and that's going to be a drop-down box. That orange box is going to be a drop-down window, and it's either going to say, you know, one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions, right? That's, those are going to be your three choices. And so you're going to have to pick one of those three choices. How do you know which one to pick? Okay, well, you've got to solve it, right? So actually, let me go ahead and erase this. So I'm going to solve this just like normal, just kind of like we did the last one. I'm going to do negative 8 times 7. I'm going to distribute. I'm going to do negative 8 times negative 1y. See how it has a negative 1 on it? Negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. And then over here, 4 times 2y is 8. And then here, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. I can tell what this one is right now. Now, that doesn't mean you know. But if you do know, here's how you can tell, right? If you get to this step and you recognize... Okay, Mr. Reed said he doesn't like the variables on the right, so he's going to undo 8y with minus 8, right? 8 minus 8 is going to give me 0y's, and so you subtract it over here. If you have the same amount of y's on both sides, you know you're going to have one of the special answers, or x's or w's, right? If your variable amount is the same, because look, 8 minus 8, 8 minus 8, they cancel each other out, and look what I'm left with. Negative 56 equals negative 12. Is that a true statement? No way. So this equation has no solution, right? This one has no solution. This is what it looks like right here when you have no solution. You have the same amount of variables, 8y and 8y, 12w and 12w, negative 3x and negative 3x, right? Each side of the equal sign has the same amount of variables, but then the constant is different, right? 56 and 12. If we would have had one that looked like this, I'm just going to, this is not the real answer, obviously, but if we had one that looked like this, say you had 10w plus 6, and then the other side said 6 plus 10w. If both sides are identical, right? These are identical, 10w and 6, they're just flipped. If you have the exact same thing on both sides, that's when you say infinite solutions, infinite solutions. And if you get one where the amount of w's is different, like if this was 8w and this is 10w, if, the, if these are different, you know it's going to have one solution, just like the last one we did, number 5. So if the amount uh, on the variables is the same, like 10 and 10, 8 and 8, 3 and 3, you know you're either going to have no solution or infinite solutions. Um, if the amount on the variables is different, you know it's only, always going to be one solution. Okay, that's number 6 and 7. So your answer on those is to just tell me, does it have one answer, does it have no answer, does it have infinite answers? Okay, number 8, now we're going to practice some absolute value. How's my time looking? 15 minutes. Okay, this might be a 20-minute video, but that's okay. If you need it to help you, and it has to go over 20 minutes, we can do that. So this is absolute value bars right there. I'm not going to work this all the way to the end just to save on time, because honestly, you should know how to work it all the way to the end once I get it started. But I'll, I'll do that first step that's a little bit confusing. Okay, I have absolute value bars only on one side. So that means I want to get the absolute value bars isolated first. How do I isolate it? Anything else that's outside the absolute value, we've got to undo it. So we're going to have to undo this, multiplying by 4. We're going to have to undo this, adding 3. And just like the other questions, I like to do the adding and subtracting part first. 
So I'm going to undo the adding with subtracting. Boom. Easy, right? That gives me 12. And now I'm just going to copy the rest of it down. 4 times the absolute value of 6x minus 1. Now, this absolute value is still being multiplied. I still have stuff out here that's outside of the bars. The absolute value bars have to be the only thing on that side of the equal sign. So I'm going to undo the times 4 with divided by 4. Boom. Divided. Boom. Divided. 4 divided by 4 over here equals 1. And you're left with this. Absolute value is all isolated, right? It's all by itself over here on the left-hand side. Look, there's nothing else. And over here, 12 divided by 4 equals 3. Once you get it to this step, you have made it through the hardest part. Then you just split it into two problems, right? Do you remember this? On one side, you do 6x minus 1 equals 3. And I'm not going to work that out. You know how to solve it. And on the other side, you do 6x minus 1, the stuff inside the absolute value. Except now you take this number and you do the opposite. And so now we do negative 3, right? So you take this, 6x minus 1, and you have that on your left-hand side on both equations. But once you solve it for positive, and then you take this number out here, and the other time you solve it for negative. And that's it. And you could solve those. I don't, you don't need to worry about solving. I don't, I'm not going to solve those right now. They're, they would actually be decimals, it looks like. But that's how you do number eight, right? Isolate the absolute value. Isolate the absolute value. And then once you get it isolated, split it into positive and negative. And then that's it. So that's going to be number eight. I'm, I didn't work that all the way out to the end, but hopefully that got you far enough. Number nine is going to be somewhat similar. Number nine is actually a little bit easier, in my opinion, because it doesn't have, well, I'll just show you. Here's why I think number nine is easier than number eight. See on this one, we have absolute value on both sides of the equal sign. Whoa. When you have absolute value bars on both sides of the equal sign, like you will on number nine, you don't have to worry about getting everything isolated like we did on the last one. All you need to do is just say, OK, um, I'm just going to go straight to the splitting part, right? I'm just going to split it into two problems. And on one side, you do 6x plus 3. The other side is also 6x plus 3. And then here's the difference. On the right-hand side of the equal sign, one time you just keep this the exact same and just take that absolute value away and just kind of make it a parenthesis, right? Make it a distributing question. So this, you just kind of drop it down. But here on the right-hand side, or the second time you do it, now instead of 3, we're going to make this a negative 3 that we're distributing. Do you see the difference? So I just split the question right at the beginning. The first time, I just keep it exactly the same. This is the exact same as this. The only thing that's different is I took away the absolute value bars. And here, I replaced them with parentheses. So you're going to distribute the 3, 3x three and 3 uh, times negative 5. And then over here, the second time you do it, it's the exact same, except see how my one of them it's a 3 and one of them I'm distributing a negative 3? That's what you'll want to do on number uh, 9, right? It won't be 3 and negative 3. It might be 4 and negative 4, 2 and negative 2, 7 and negative 7, something like that. You change the distributing part. That is the only difference right there. And then you can solve both of those. I'm not going to I'm not going to work all those out because I showed you how to work out questions like that on like number five and six and seven. So you'll have to work both of those out, right? I I didn't work them out, but you will. Um, same thing is going to apply on number ten, except number ten is set up a little differently. So I'll show you number ten to kind of at least get you rolling a little bit. Number ten, absolute value on this side. Number ten, also absolute value on this side. Except now there's no distributing part. There's no number right here. And so what do we do in this situation? Same thing, right? We're still going to split it into two problems. When there's absolute value on both sides, we're going to split this thing into two questions. On the left-hand side of your equal sign, you're going to put 3x plus 7 on both of these. Right? This is always the same on both of your answers or your both of your equations. The right-hand side is where it gets different, right? On this one time, you keep it exactly the same, negative 40 plus 3x. The second time, we have to make it different, right? So instead of doing negative 40 times 3x, we're going to do negative 1 times 40, negative 40 times 3x, right? And so we have to do the opposite the second time. I'm going to just copy this back in black so you can see that it's the exact same. Do you see the difference? 
The first on the left hand side, I basically have this entire question just copied down here. I just took away the absolute value bars. The second time you do it, it's almost identical. The only difference is here I didn't distribute anything. Basically what you do is you just distribute a one and it keeps everything the same. Here you distribute negative one and that's gonna change everything, right? So solve this question twice. I'm not gonna actually solve this, right? You would technically do minus three X on both sides. Actually, this one would be a no solution. You would get no solution on this side, right? Because this would be minus three X and this would be minus three X and you would get seven equals negative 40 and you're like, oh wait, that doesn't make sense. So this side is no solution, but this side will have a solution because this negative one that you distribute is gonna change it just enough that now you can actually solve it, right? Now I could actually do plus three X on both sides and look, I'm gonna get six X's over here. So I could technically solve it from here. I'm not gonna finish it all the way because it would be a decimal, but you could actually solve this one. So this one that says no solution, that's gonna be kind of wiped out. Don't worry about that for your answer. Your real answer is gonna be down here. Okay, that was a tricky one, number 10. Little bit tricky. Little bit tricky. Okay, how am I doing over here? 11, we're almost done. 11 is like a super easy word problem. I made this up, it's very similar. It's not the actual one. It says you buy 12 tacos for $18.58, write and solve an equation to find the price of one single taco. So if you buy 12 tacos for $18.58, look, they already have the equation started for you. Something, something, something equals 18.58. Um, 12 tacos for 18.58, that would be just like 12 times x right and you don't even have to put the times you could just put 12x that would work 12x equals 1858 i don't know if they'll t they might tell you to use a certain variable if they don't tell you just put an x because sometimes it'll get mad if you put a t or for tacos or something and then it'll say what's the cost of one taco so you could just divide this 1858 divided by 12 use your calculator i don't even know if this works because i just made this question up 1858 divided by 12 and you can see mine doesn't even work um, it shouldn't be like that Mine would have been 155 rounded. See how they already have the dollar sign right there? You do not have to type the dollar sign in the box since they already have the dollar sign right there. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, that's gonna be number 12. It should be one of the easier ones. Uh, number 13 and 14. Let me get my board back over here that had 13 and 14. 13 and 14 are gonna be those literal equations, the ones that I feel like are the hardest ones for most people. Solve the equation for a certain variable, right? And this one, we're gonna say solve it for W. And 13 and 14 are the exact same type of question, but I'm just gonna do one. I'm not gonna do both. So like, here's one of them. This might be what one of them looks like. Oh, uh, hang on, I messed that up. 10X plus six W equals five, right? If I wanna solve this for W, I wanna know how do I get the W isolated all by itself? What's happening to the letter W? Just like we did earlier on those uh, two-step equation ones, or the absolute value ones, we wanna get this isolated all by itself. The W is being multiplied by six right now. The W is being added with 10. I wanna undo, use inverse operations and undo all those things, right? So instead of adding 10 X's, I want to subtract 10 X's. Don't you dare try to subtract those. You cannot subtract these. These are not like terms. This is just a plain old number. This has a variable on it. So just keep this as five minus 10 X. You cannot subtract those. If you put negative five X, you have messed up and your whole problem's gonna be wrong. Okay, so that gets rid of the adding part. Now I still have this multiplying part right here. How do I undo multiplying six? I divide by six. Now, I like to do this. I like to do two separate division problems. Some people just do one giant fraction with six on the bottom. That's technically fine too but I like to do two separate ones because sometimes you can reduce these. Like, look what you actually get on this one. You actually get a fraction, but that's okay. Five over six, you can type that in the, uh, in the little box. And then here, 10 over six, I can reduce that, right? 10 over six is the same thing as five thirds, right? If you divide here and here, divide those by two. So I personally like this, um, that's what I would put. If you just put one giant fraction over six, it might accept that but that's gonna be 13 and 14. You're gonna have a variable. You're gonna to have to do two things to undo it, adding and subtracting first, dividing at the end. When you divide, if you get a fraction, that's fine. Don't panic if you get a fraction on these. You probably will. That's 13 and 14. Okay, and then the last one. The last one is gonna give you a 
shape. And it's going to say, hey, the sum of the angles, the sum of the angles inside this design is a certain amount. All right, on this one, it's a hexagon, so I put 720. That's how many degrees are in a hexagon. It's going to ask you write and solve an equation to find out what x equals right here, and then actually solve it for x. And they'll already have the equation started. They want you to fill in the box. What, 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 what equals 720? And look at all this nonsense we have in yellow. Don't be overwhelmed by this. It's really not that bad. All we need to do is combine these like terms together. And I hope you can read this very well. Um, do you see how we have all these? We have all these x's. Like right here, we have 2x. Right here, we have 3x. Right here, we have 2x. Right here, we have 3x. Can I combine all those like terms together? Yes, I can, right? So basically what you're going to do, I don't have room to really write it, but you're going to take all of this stuff, right? You're going to take the 2x minus 5 that's right here. You're going to take the 3x minus 10. You're basically making one big question. And here's a 2x, and then here's a 3x, and then there's a 120, and there's an 85. You're basically going to, and I'm out of room, so I'm just going to go down here. You're basically going to do this giant equation equals 720 degrees, and you just need to combine all the like terms, right? They told you that it equals 720 up here. You just need to combine all the like terms, right? Combine all the x's together. And so let me kind of highlight these maybe with a different color right here. All these x's, so here you've got 3x and 2x, that's 5x's. Here's another 3x, so we have 3, 2, 3, and 2. Let's see, 3 and 2, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think we have 10 x's if we add all those up, right? 3 plus 2, and then 3x and 2x. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 more is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10 x's. So we have 10 x's. And then here we have regular numbers, right? We have 120. We have 85. We have, this is minus 10. There's a subtracting in front of it. This is a minus 5. If you can't see that, it has a minus in front of it. It's also down here, right? negative 5, negative 10, 120, and 85. And so we're just going to add those up. Uh, 120 plus 85, and then and this is minus 10, and this is minus 5. And so I would just take all these. I would add that up to for whatever that is. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's going to be like oh, 190, I think. And so then you would just put in your equation in your equation box over here, you want it to be simplified. You do not want to type all this into this little box right there. That's not going to be acceptable. I don't even know if it's going to fit all that in there. So you're going to go ahead and combine the like terms, type that in there for your equation, and then you can solve it from here. All right? You can do subtracting on both sides. I could do 720 minus 190, and then that's 530, and then divide by 10. And then my answer, my answer is going to be 53. The letter X equals 53 in my, in my question. And I think it already has the degrees right there. You do not have to type the degree sign. Okay? So that is number 15. All it is is combine like terms, add up all the X's, combine all the regular numbers, the constants, the degree amounts, and then just solve that equation. Take this minus whatever, and then divide it, and you'll get your answer right there. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. We're almost at 30 minutes, but hopefully you can use this to help you as you take the questions on the test today. Feel free to um, use this video. You can pause this video. You can have it up and watch it on each question and pause it and then use that as you kind of go step by step. And I hope you do well. Um, if you have any problems or major issues, just make sure to send us an email. And uh, I hope that we get a lot of people who are successful on this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm going to go ahead and upload this. We'll see you.